Um, okay, hi everyone. Um, apart from Ben, who needs to be here, uh, this is a noob's presentation. So if anyone is looking for something deeper, you know, this, this may not be the right venue. Um, if not, we will just get started. And, you know, now that I'm going to begin, um, does anyone want to volunteer? Like a magic trick? No? Okay. Then I will be my own volunteer. You're a volunteer, okay, perfect. So, uh, what was it really small? Okay, um, do, does anyone have anything that you want Ben to say? I hope it gets recorded. Like, make America great again, something short, simple. Less than 10 seconds, if not, my comb would just die. Anything? No? Okay. Um. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, sorry. Is just great. Okay, let me just, what's the command again? Um, yeah, okay. Should run. Hold on. Yeah, go ahead. Let's keep Pulse Asia great. Okay, so I'll do a few recordings. Um, just bear with me for a moment so that I don't need you to volunteer again. And I'll explain all this later as well. Sorry, round two. <laughs> Let's make Fast Asia greater. And then... <laughs> and... Uh... Okay, yep. Let's make Fast Asia the greatest. Cool. Okay, so hopefully now that I have everything inside my folder, I might have overwritten something, but that's fine. And if you look at it here, so now I've recorded two WAV files live. Yes, there's no tricks up my sleeve. And if I were to run the code, uh, sorry, let's see, right. So I am cheating here a little because I don't want to memorize the, the whole script. Um, this should work, hopefully. So what this is doing is calling up the deep speech uh, library, uh, which has um, a TensorFlow framework underneath it. And it says here, ah, crap, this doesn't work. So this is why I got Ben to record a few times so that we can see the errors. So here, um, what it's saying is that it doesn't recognize the um, signed and unsigned uh, state. And if I were to run the second one, this should work. And um, I think Ben said something along the lines of make false Asia greatest, and that should be the output that I should see. But it's not very accurate. Let's give it a while. Incomplete way chunk. Hmm. Okay, let me see now. Could have been too short. Okay, let, let me just record something myself. So one more round, right? Sorry, guys. Uh, so as I'm typing this, maybe I'll explain this as well as to what I'm doing. Uh, so what happens here is that, um, are you guys familiar with the SOX framework for voice and recordings? No? Right. So this is a pretty nifty tool for, for anything that you want to do for manipulation of voices. So it's pretty cool, and uh, when you're running demos, you know, you do everything within Terminal. It just looks cooler. And um, what I'm doing here is calling out the record command. I'm setting the channels, this dash C, to be one, because deep speech as of now can only do mono channel versus stereo. Um, at the same time, the rate must be set at 16,000. So this is also part of the documentation. You can't do anything else for the sampling. Um, so the error you saw just now, the unsigned integer, that is the encoding. So that's what I'm setting as well. And then, of course, the file name to be testing one dot wave. Okay, hopefully this works. Let's make FOSS Asia greatest. And let's run it again.
And if this still doesn't work, then I'm sorry, it's, it's really the demo gods and we'll go back to the presentation slides, right? So let me explain a bit here as well. Um, well, okay, wave chunk. I think what is happening is that this is a bit too short, so it's not really running. Um, I'll go with something that I actually have that works. So this particular LDC file is normally the test file that you use uh, to, to play um, a short script. Okay, let me just get this to run. Sorry, it's really slow. All right. Oh, there's no volume. Sorry, is, is there any way to play volume on this? Or I could just take that out? Sorry. Okay, I'm really sorry. You're just going to have to take my word for it. So this particular file, I could showcase it to you later, standalone. Um, it's a sound file that comes from this particular TIMIT library. And it has a very short uh, text that I think over 600 uh, Americans actually read out. So this is one of the test files. And um, when you actually run this, it will output uh, the speech to text. Yep, sorry. So what I'm doing here is that I'm loading, um, if you look at the command, you'll say deep speech, that's the, the library, and then the output graph.pb, if you guys use TensorFlow, it is the, the model that's output from uh, TensorFlow. So you need to load that, and then the WAV file, Alphabet.txt is really all the um, consonants and sounds that you have inside your alphabet. So part of what we're doing was we're training for Bengali. Um, there's actually, if I understand correctly, 40 to 50 sounds, but we didn't care. We just went with the English alphabet. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. I'm guessing I didn't pray to the demo gods today. It's, it's not working. I tried it before I came here, so I'm really sorry. I will look at it later. Okay, maybe I'll go back to this first. So I failed, I got chopped in two. Um, yes, the demo didn't quite work. And uh, just to give credit to the folks, so Mozilla, it was uh, their, their code. Uh, the actual theory came from Baidu. So I think Andrew Ung was the one that came up with deep speech, the three variations of it, really cool paper. And then that's my team sitting over there. Um, maybe they'll be able to get the demo to work. You know, I'm, I'm just a guy copying code from them. And why this is important, I actually gave a talk about this at Geek Camp, um, I think earlier this year or last year. So as we move forward, you see Alexa, um, at HomePod and stuff, and it becomes very important that, you know, SEO is going to change in a very different direction. When you query for something, it's only going to be the top result. It's not even the first page anymore. So I think uh, voice user interface would be something of the future. And um, the project that we're all running is based out of Bangladesh. And just some context, um, high illiteracy. So people don't really understand uh, words, they don't really read and write, which is why the concept was to have a voice user interface, interface for accounting. And so what are the things you need? Um, I don't know why they've not updated this to 3.0. It's still 2.7. Um, when you're going through the code, confirm that it's there. And we set things up in virtual environments so that we don't muck up if you have multiple versions of Python. So these are all the things that you need to set up. Um, if you are running it, do not... Oh, maybe I didn't go into... Yeah, okay, I think I might have missed, missed a step. Anyways, so once you're in virtual environment, um, you set it up, you start it, and then you deactivate it. And of course, you install DeepSpeech. 
And um, this is a ginormous file. So have really good bandwidth. I think it's around 1.4 gigs. So these are the four files that I was telling you about. The TensorFlow, uh, TensorFlow output, the alphabets. Um, this is the language model binary format. I have no clue what this is. So if you guys know what it is, please let me know. And the tree is, I guess, computer scientist way of playing with the word tree, like T-R-E-E, -E, but this is T-R-I-E. So it's also another part of the model. And yeah, maybe if we have a bit of time, I'll show you the model again. I, I believe, I think I know what's wrong. Anyways, um, yeah, so in terms of the, the models, it was, um, let me just go through. Yep, in terms of the models, it was trained based on these three uh, papers. So Fisher, Libri Speech, and Switchboard. So it accounted for different accents, different people. Um, and I think there's around 3,500 hours of training. And it's still really, really crap. So if I get the demo to work, you'll see. It's around 50 to 60%. And right now, our team has around maybe 50 to 60 hours. So what we have for the Bengali model, and because of the fact that we're not using Bengali alphabets, it's really crap. But, you know, we're working on it. Um, so this, this is really the part whereby you've already trained stuff and you want to fine tune your model. Um, things that I understand is if you change the learning rate, things could get a bit faster, but uh, may not be as accurate. Um, the checkpoint steps and checkpoint directory, these are meant for you. It's part of TensorFlow, so if, if you're training, um, it allows you, you know, your computer to, to suddenly run out of power and it'll be fine. And it'll just pick up from last checkpoint. So these are cool things that are built in. Um, so maybe I will explain some of the theory. So who's familiar with sampling and, and how it works? Yeah? So I think this is an important step of how we convert uh, voice to text. This is the first step. So why it's run at 16,000, you have to imagine each bar to be one. And we have 16,000 running across your, your voice. Um, so the human speech is around 200 to 20,000, I think, something to that effect. I need to check again. Uh, and it helps to sample enough such that we can reconstruct it. And this was a slightly more difficult um, concept that I took a long time to figure out from the papers of deep speech. So does anyone, is anyone familiar with this? No? Okay, so I'll try my best. I've got two videos. Um, one is Under Pressure from Queen, and the other one is Vanilla Ice, so Ice Ice Baby. So have all of you heard the songs? Yeah, I'll, I'll just play the first three, four seconds, right? <laughs> Yeah, so now. I'm sorry. So you hear that it's dun 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 dun. Okay, now we look at vanilla ice. Yeah, so you hear it's really around the same, right? You notice that it's also dun 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 dun, dun but. So what this means is that if I were only to listen to three, four seconds of this particular clip, I cannot differentiate, is it under pressure or is it ice ice baby? But if I have one more second of this, then I can classify to say, hey, this is the crappier version and these are the classics. Yeah, so um, essentially this is, this is what CTC is, my understanding. If, if you guys figure out something else, let me know because this is how I interpreted the paper. Um, right. And recurrent neural networks. So I believe some of you may be better experts in the field. I know Ben is. <laughs> um, my understanding is that this is really just chucking memory into your neural networks so that there is, um, you know, you're able, especially for, for sequences, it becomes better because you remember what's previously. So if you look at CTC, you need to have like a memory to say, oh, what is the same? What has changed? Um, I will share some links from this blog that I picked up which had really simple uh, explanations and I thought it was pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm going to skip this. And in essence, this is really how the deep speech model works. So there's also a blog link um, that explains it in more detail. Um, in essence, you know, the H1, H2, H3, these are the layers within the neural networks um, that pushes out to the feature extraction. 
Okay. And there's really, like, out of this fine-tuning stuff, there's still a lot of things that I don't understand. So as of now, I'm just going to go with the, you know, creative writer's license and say, just imagine it to be vibranium technology. I don't get it as, as, at this point of time because uh, it's still a lot to go through. And some of the challenges that we faced when we were actually training the data is uh, a lot of noise. Um, how many of you been, have been to Bangladesh, except for my team? No? So it's, it's really noisy. Um, there's a lot of cars honking. There's a lot of people talking. It's just a lot of people. So when you are capturing your data, even if you're in a, in a room, it's still, like, you still get a lot of noise coming in. So we've tried uh, pre-processing steps to remove the noise and filtering out through frequencies, but mm, it's still proving to be a challenge. At the same time, like I said, we roughly need around maybe four to 5,000 hours of data. Right now we have 50 to 60, so we don't have enough data sets. Um, so I was really keen to go to the, the Mozilla guys talk on com uh, deep voice. And I think they have a really good, cool platform for voice collection. But I think as of now, it's still English. And this is the presentation uh, shortcut if you guys are interested. These references, if you guys would like to learn more, are strongly recommended. So the first one talks about um, how RNNs work in simplicity. It's not the cool ass paper from TensorFlow. That is just extremely complicated and extremely long. So I found this a lot better. Um, this hacks.mozilla link, um, this is the guy who actually came out of deep speech for Mozilla. So I think he explains it in a lot better detail. And before we go on to questions, I just want to try one more time. I think I know what I'm missing. Okay. Uh, right. So, let's see. Oh, no, sorry. This is the two waves one. Yeah, this should work. Ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> right, th that's it. Any questions? Shitan? Yeah. How do you differentiate uh, WaveNet and deep speech? I tried WaveNet for speech to text, mm -hmm. but I feel it's not that accurate that uh, it should be. Open source WebNet present model. I never tried digital deep speech. So, what do you think uh, in terms of accuracy? Um, I think in terms of wave, I haven't tried WaveNet personally, but I don't think it runs on a neural network, right? It, it runs on. It, it does run yeah. on. Yeah. So TensorFlow and Keras uh, is pretend model. Mm -hmm. they, they have been published on GitHub platform. Right. So I just clone and. Uh, the inference with my wave file. It, even though it was PL voice, so there was a lot of, uh, it's like 70% of accuracy I found mm -hmm. on good uh, wave file, but I never tried deep speech. So, uh, what do you think the accuracy with? Um, right now, I don't know. It's really dependent on the data that you have. So, the larger the data set with more diversity, of course, it gets better. Yeah, so I, I don't have an answer, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. And one uh, clarification question for me. So yeah. what you guys are doing, you're taking a pre-built model for TensorFlow, yes. and you're using transfer learning to further train it with your own data. We don't transfer, we take it as is. So it's built for English. So we take the consonants as is. Um, so if like uh, the only Bengali word that I know that my team is so sick of is potatoes, so alu. And when you put it into romanized English form, it can be spelled as A-L-U or A-L-O-O. -O. Um, so in essence, we collect all this and then we tag it to say, okay, this is alu. And we have a dictionary that, you know, um, that maps back to the intent that we wanted. So it's, it's, a, it's a stupid step at the moment, but it works. Thank you, sorry. Thanks.